everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to be discussing what to do on the hard days of homeschool because you guys there are going to be hard days and if you're not having hard days yet that is wonderful but as the school year progresses and burnout starts to hit it is good to have a plan in place for those moments so I hope that you can glean some wonderful ideas from this video so the first tip is at least this is something that I am incorporating into our everyday no matter what is I am starting our day off with the Bible you guys if we can read the Bible and do our devotional I'm counting that a win for the day we had enough hard days at the end of last year that that was something that fell to the wayside there were days that we either got to it as the very last subject or we didn't get to it at all and I don't want us to ever think that it's okay to start our day without being in God's Word because if we're in God's Word most likely our our feelings about the day our reactions to the day our reactions to each other are going to be much more focused on good things than on you know just the bad feelings that sometimes you just you know the bad moods that you wake up with uh next because i have my list go outside get go for a quick walk around the neighborhood before you even try to look at any of the curriculum get their bodies moving get the energy out let them you know breathe fresh air and you know be in the sun and you know just be in nature for a little bit sometimes that's all we need to just really turn around our mood tip number three play with them build a four do um you know and like play something where like you're getting energy out play hide and go seek build a fort play tag you know do something that just kind of makes you all bond and laugh and have fun and see if that you know helps you turn things around and tip number four don't take yourself too seriously, you guys. This is so much easier to say than do, but I am a big advocate for some days you're just not going to get the day to turn around no matter how many good intentions you have, no matter how many different things you, you know, you have to, you know, that you try. So take the day off. Nobody is going to come and be like, you didn't homeschool on Thursday, so you're, you know, a terrible homeschooler no take the day off it's okay to take a day off here and there now if you're taking you know monday tuesday wednesday doing a little bit of schoolwork on thursday a little bit on friday and then the following week you're doing the same thing then maybe you need to take you know a week or two off but if you're just having a bad day or your kids are just having a bad day there's nothing wrong with taking the day off that's one of the blessings of homeschool is that we don't have to send our kids out of the house when they're having a bad day. Instead, they have a place that is safe for them to talk about their feelings and explore their feelings and learn how to name their feelings. So take a, you know, advantage of those days. Help them to navigate the hard times because this is the best environment for them to do those things. The next tip, okay, you guys, and this is going to be a hard one to say and probably a hard one to hear, but you need to ask yourself if this is a consistent trend like I had mentioned before you know is it you know all week long is it every week is their attitude a reflection of yours now I'm not saying that you have to be perfect because you don't everybody needs a savior me especially I have had probably more hard days than the kids <laughs> sometimes especially with my attitude and as I grow in motherhood you know for those of you who don't know I have four children between the ages of you know almost two and 18 or 19 and motherhood can be very challenging seasons of life can be very challenging and sometimes the ch challenges um, you know really put us in a position where we're not our best selves so if you're having more bad days than good days ask yourself is there something some kind of heart work that you need to do in yourself to create a better environment for your children and that's not always easy to look inward it's not always easy to to tell you guys but um, you know I wouldn't be giving you very good tips if I didn't address the hard parts of mothering and homeschooling because um, 
you know, when I went to the homeschool convention, I, I took many wonderful classes, but I think one of the ones that I remember the most was one from Jamie Erickson who wrote Homeschool Bravely. You guys, like, the more I read about uh, her books and follow her on social media, like, the more I just, like, I'm a total fangirl. But somebody asked her, you know, what do you do on the hard days when you're just, you know, angry or the kids have been fighting so much and you're, you know, responding to that with frustration. And one of the things that she said is that you can't teach them that they need a savior unless you show them that you also need a savior. And so the, your kids are going to see some of your ugliest moments. And there's a lot of guilt that can come from that you know, with just motherhood in general. And it's important to show them that you need a savior, but it's also important to show them how to navigate the hard days when you're going through them just as much as when they're going through them. So if you're having a hard day and it's consistent or they're having a hard day and it's consistent, look inward and see if there's some changes that you need to make for yourself because and don't get me wrong there is not one homeschool mom who is perfect even if from the outward glance that you get at a co-op or a play date or just out on the street you know appears to be perfect because we all struggle in different ways and just like she says your children are going to see some of your ugliest moments just like you're going to see some of theirs. And so it's important to just address those moments and to not let that become your all everyday response to things. So look inward, but also, you know, set aside some daily affirmations for yourself. Tell, you know, things that tell, that remind you that even in your hard moments, you're a good mom, that you love your babies more than anyone in this whole world, and that God has blessed them with the perfect hand-picked mother from him. And um, give yourself grace. You know, homeschooling is not easy. This is not an easy role to be called to, and you are doing amazing. And the last tip is to play educational games with them. If you just wanna take the day off, but you still want learning to happen, like I said, play some fun games with them. I have a whole stack right here. I'm gonna link all of them down below in case you guys see something that you would love to work into your homeschool. The first one is for my kindergarten age daughter. She loves Fancy Nancy, so we got her the matching game just to help her with uh, you know like memory and strategy and counting and she has really loved this game next you guys we got this to go with our creepy crawlies unit study from gather round it is bug bingo we also got a bird bingo but we haven't opened it yet but this one was so fun because they get to see what all of the different uh creatures look like with and learn their names but there's also an information guide that gives you facts about the bugs too so this has been a wonderful educational game that we really enjoyed Next is a great game if you want to work on strategy and critical thinking and just mapping out things. Uh, it is Ticket to Ride. We got the junior edition first, but we loved it so much that I went back and got the uh, original version. And I want to get all of the add-ons so when we go throughout our world history curriculum, we can work in like Ticket to Ride London, Ticket to Ride Japan, and all of that. But um, this is a really great game, and it's been really fun. Next, you guys, I got this because my son loves gnomes, but I did not realize how much I was actually going to personally like this game. So it is Gnomes at Night, and I'm going to just pop it out real quick. So the way you set it up is there's, there's four of these boards, and they have maps on each side. And you have these little magnetic gnomes. So they connect to each side and then they drag each other along. So you're playing on one side, your child is playing on the other side, but your maps on each side are different. So what you basically have to do is you get these little cards that tell you um, 
what treasure you're looking for. So if it happens to be on your side, then you have to work together to get there. So if you're stuck through here, you have to um, explain where you're at and that you can't go any further and then they might have a spot on their board that they can move to. So it really requires you to communicate well with each other, to strategize because you're also on a timer and um, you know I think that it just really helps with active listening, following directions and communicating with each other in an effective way so you can make sure that you win the game together. So I really love that because you have to work together. It's no like, oh, I lost and you won and why do you always win? It's none of that. So I really, really like this particular game. I feel like it's um, it's very good for the active listening, you guys, which, you know, let's face it, sometimes kids just need to learn to listen and follow directions. Next, last but not least, is this uh, alphabet soup sorting. This has been really good for my beginning reader. Um, they have like the can that has each letter of the alphabet so there will be 26 of these cans and then inside each can is something that belongs to that letter so d will have a picture of dice it'll have a big letter d um it'll have a word that starts with d and then they have to figure out where all of it gets sorted into the proper can so this has been really fun for her even my nine-year-old though you guys like He's an excellent reader. He even enjoys playing with this set. Basically anything from learning resources is going to be awesome. Um, I hope that you guys got some good ideas, maybe some fun games to work into your homeschool on the hard days. Uh, I just wanna give you encouragement that even on the hard days, you're doing a good job. So don't let the hard moments make you feel like you're failing them or that you're not a good homeschool you know teacher because you are you love those babies more than anyone in this whole world so even if they were in public school you would have hard days even if they were in private school you would have hard days you're going to have hard days because life is sometimes hard and god gave them the mom that he handpicked for them so Take comfort in the fact that you are the best mom for your kids, and I hope your days are smooth sailing, but on the off chance that it's not, hopefully some of these tips can help you. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and I'll see you again later. Bye.